Stephanie is back with us now, and today we're talking about pediatric hernias and appendicitis. If you have questions, please send them to the doctors at WLBT.com. Thank you, Maggie. Joining us is Dr. Barry Birch with Baptist Medical Center, obviously a pediatrician. You know, I've heard, I know that appendicitis is fairly common in children, but uh, hernias? Are they? How, how does a child get a hernia? Yes, uh, actually I'm a pediatric surgeon. Uh -huh. I do general surgery for children and, and adults, but uh, ch children are, the, the hernias I deal with in children are more congenital in nature, so these are things they're born with. And just like the hernias that adults get, they're in similar locations around the belly button or umbilicus or in the inguinal area. And to, for them to present themselves as a newborn or a two to 10 year old teenager kid, Typically, it's, it's something they were born with. So it's a natural weakness or hole that's there right when the child's born. You don't always see it right when they're born. Sometimes it takes a few years playing a sporting event as they get older, but uh, we certainly see them in brand new babies uh, immediately when they're born. Premature babies for sure have a much higher incidence just because some of the developmental processes that have to take place haven't completed that process and that's why we see them a lot more in the in the premature ages. Now I've seen ba babies with the protruded belly button. Yep. Is that an umbilical horn hernia? That is. It's an umbilical hernia. It's uh, probably the most common one we see. Uh, a lot of those we let children grow uh, several years because many of them will go away spontaneously so we don't jump to offer an operation. Most of these kids are seeing a pediatrician and they're monitoring it. There are some things a parent needs to know that what you're seeing protrude could be intestinal contents and if that were to get stuck in the hernia it would get red, uh, the baby would cry and be very inconsolable and would need to be seen uh, because it could be an emergent, uh, urgent situation that would need to be taken care of surgically. Um, however, many times uh, that is not necessary. Most of the times uh, children grow and as they reach three or four years of age, if it hasn't gone away, we typically uh, intervene and repair it. But it kind of depends on the exact size of the hernia and how the child is handling it. Well, let's move on to appendicitis. How common is this in children? Yes. It doesn't seem like it happens as much anymore. Maybe I'm just not hearing about it. Maybe. Uh, it, it's <laughs> yeah, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's pretty common. It's, uh, you know, one of the more common urgent surgeries that I do. Um, as many as 1 in 15 people will get appendicitis at some point in their life. And we talk about it a lot in the pediatric age group because uh, the, your highest incidence, we see the highest incidence is about between the ages of 10 and 20. Although wow. we see kids as early as two year old. I've, I've done an appendectomy for a one or two year old on more than one occasion. So it happens, it's a little more complicated when they're under five, but um, uh, certainly appendicitis is very common in the 10 to early teen ages. What are the symptoms? Uh, and uh, you know, right. how do you know that it's not just side pain or? Right. Well, where you need to get to the emergency room or to a doctor? Good question. Um, the appendix is a, a, a protrusion on the right side of the colon, so it's, it typically manifests with right-sided, uh, right lower side abdominal pain. It can occur, they can have their pain more around the belly button area, the middle part of the abdomen, but typically it moves pretty quickly over to the right side. But pain, if I had to say one word, it's usually pain, and it's usually on the right side of the abdomen. Um, abdominal pain usually followed by fever, nausea, diarrhea. Uh, but kids can sometimes present a little differently. I've seen children present just with uh, urinary type symptoms like painful urination and um, sometimes you just see kids that are get a little lethargic and really don't have a lot of pain symptoms. They just sort of lay around and the mother or parent notices that they're having fever and uh, then, then begins to notice that there's a, a pain associated with it. But pain is the number one thing we see. Thank you so much, Dr. Birch. All That's right. amazing. We appreciate it so much. Dr. Barry Birch with Baptist Medical Center. He's a pediatric surgeon. And for the